All right, guys, I showed you this list yesterday, the crazy 60 card rescue ace slash snake eyes list. If you want to know how the theory behind this deck is and why we are playing 60 cards, go check out the video from yesterday. It's in the top right corner of the video. But today I want to show you some really nice replays that I recently played with the deck here. That brought me here to Master 5. You can see the last, I think, four games were playing this deck and we can quickly uh, go through them. Uh, there is, I think, one where my opponent scoops directly, but a few others where I can show you a few cool things that you can do with this deck. Also learn a bit because here and there I definitely made a misplay. So we have our starting end here and uh, as you can see we can start with a few different things. I decided to start with the bonfire, grabbing the snake eye ash and go for snake eye ash normal summon because in the backhand I have the wanted. Mm, that being said, I should probably have used the wanted in the draw phase. Mm, not really, because you can go bonfire and then he goes to unlock button and you can still go wanted. So this way around, I don't show him that I have follow up. So I go bonfire, snake eye ash, and then snake eye ash. I think I'm getting yeah impermed here, and that's right. And obviously now I can go for my wanted to still get into the original sinful spoils engine here. I'm grabbing my Dia star. This gets impermed. Never forget that this is impermed, so do not use this send away effect. Obviously, I go on to chain block this to set this in the spell trap. Then I activate this. Obviously, this one away because this is free and I keep this body then. Then I activate my hydrant here and get impermed here. And here's one thing that I could have done actually to prevent this. Uh, one good play that I could have done. In the end it works out and we win this obviously, but what I could have done is just uh, go for uh, Linko Ribo here. That would have played into Nip though, but I will. I would have also played into Nip anyway. So you could go Linko Ribo here, put this in the grave, then you have a Linko Ribo and the Black Witch here. And then you can transform. Unfortunately, we don't have a Fire or Dark here, but then you can transform Black Witch and Linko Ribo into... I don't know, the the a dark or maybe the barricade blocker or a heater. It doesn't really matter because it's only like a link to body. Um, and then we would have the Linko Ribo in the graveyard. And uh, remember that when you have the Linko Ribo in the graveyard, then you can just quick effect uh, tribute for cost, a level one from the field. And then I could have dodged the imperm, which would have also gotten me uh, the hydrant into the grave. Should have made the barricade blocker, by the way, because the barricade blocker is, if this card is linked summoned, you can discard one card. So I can discard the Rescue H HQ um, because the problem, as you can see um, at this current moment, is that we only have this one Rescue S card. So even if I could have gotten into Turbulence, I would still need another Rescue S card from the grave. So Barricade Blocker, this is why the card is in the deck, right? Barricade Blocker, discard the Rescue H HQ, gives you or gets you into the Turbulence if I could have searched it. I think we will exactly do that. So now I'm drawing because I don't have any more plays, don't have my normal summon and I can't obviously do anything else here beside Link. So I'm deciding to draw and see what I get. I see, get another wanted, not really important here. So I go for an IP MS Karina here. And then link these two away for the Promethean Princess. And now the cool thing is that I obviously can reuse my Snake Eye Ash. Remember, this is like a new Snake Eye Ash, so I can still use the second effect. The idea was, <laughs> obviously there's a nip here, the idea was to um, activate the Rescue, Age, uh, Rescue Ace HQ, send these two away um, with the Snake Eye Ash effect to get the Flame Birch Dragon onto the field, and then I would have gotten into um, way more bodies afterwards. Unfortunately, I get nipped here. So there goes the nip, and there goes the token, and obviously I have to skip the turn, unfortunately, but he also has invested a lot of resources here, triple hand traps, I have an ash to stop him, and I have a yeah, fake set down, infinite impermanence, because he doesn't know the card, right? He goes, uh, Rakea wants to destroy this, it's perfect, this one can be ashed, so I'm ashing this, which means he just goes battle phase, and then goes battle phase and then in the end phase I activate my wanted which then leads to him scooping because obviously he sees that I have follow up plays with my wanted play. So a little mistake you could say uh, that I did in the beginning. I could have played around the imperm with the barricade blocker and this would safely have gotten me into the play though he had like a Nibiru but you can't play around anything so I guess that would have been fine.
Okay, the next hand, we are once again going first here. This is a pre uh, pretty obvious hand. We have double thrust. We don't need the thrust, so we are uh, getting uh, rid of the thrust via our dear Bellstar here, one of them, uh, keeping the infinite permanence, and then uh, the rescue ace trap. Obviously, we want to go into a rescue ace engine if we can. So I am going original sinful spoils. Send this away. Still have my normal summon. I get max seed here, and I'm like, okay, hmm, hmm, hmm. What am I going to do? I decide to just go, and this is this is the strength of the rescue ace deck because under max seed, this is quite nice. I go for the thrust and set an infinite impermanence for next turn and then I get the rescue as airlifter which I can still normal summon not giving him a nip summon and obviously I'm getting the emergency because with the emergency for one more special summon I will get the turbulence now sending away the airlifter and then turbulence to set all the rescue ace cards. I am setting the other trap setting the emergency for preventer and then um, don't setting uh, the alert here because and now that I think about it, it was actually a mistake not setting the alert because I wanted space to set the other two, right? But obviously setting the alert, I could have activated the alert with my hydrant here. I'm not quite sure if I activate the emergency now, but I could have just activated alert and then grabbed the preventer and then also summon the preventer. I could have um, made a way bigger board here um, if uh, I have just grabbed the alert here. A bit of a mistake here. I go over and I think of the draw phase, I just go for the preventer, which you can do. And then then I, I'm planning on sending away the turbulence. And for some reason, I send away the hydrant, which doesn't make any sense because the hydrant is the one giving all these traps the bonus effect. So that was stupid. He goes small world and uh, shows me that he's vanquished soul, which is a bit bad because all of our targeting stuff <laughs> is unfortunately very bad against vanquished soul. He goes vanquished soul raisin. I go imperm. Obviously, this then um, prompts him to use his uh, Caesar values, which now I use my second imperm. This is very expensive for me, but I don't want him to get uh, another card. And this one is basically also now um, used, so that I know already. Uh, I can still negate this if he wants to destroy something here. And this was expensive for me, but um, yeah, I can't let him get more advantage. He, sh he shows me a dark with the stake your soul, bringing the heavy soul borger to the field. He draws one, which I don't negate because that's just not impactful enough. And then he tries to destroy, shows me an earth, a fire, and the dark, and I react with uh, my, so, so keep in mind, I have still the negate, the destruction, and the preventer face down, Book of Moon. So I negate this, and then I think about what can happen next, right? So um, he has normal summon, right? And Stakeuso was also already used. He has already used his, oops, Caesar Valius, and there is the Heavy Borger on the field, which he could have another Heavy Borger in the hand and could still use the Heavy Borger's hand effect, um, but there's also already one on the field, so it's not that likely that the other one is in the hand, right? Because why would you go for Stakeuso Heavy Borger if you would still, or if you already have a Heavy Borger, right? So it doesn't really make sense. So here's my Here's my thought process, right? I think the thing that he can do now is obviously battle and kill something here, but he can also go into the link one, which is the quick effect, which I can't destroy because he can just chain it quick effect and then can summon, uh, for example, the, uh, wasn't that a Dr. Madloff in the hand? Yeah, he could then summon the Dr. Madloff with his link one. So I decide on flipping the Borger down and destroying the Caesar with my last trap here so that, uh, Obviously, with a flip down card, you can't make a link summon. So I flip this down, destroy this one. And now, in theory, this should end his turn because he has used nearly everything that he can use um, when it comes to his engine. That works. He goes end phase here. We go turn change. And then I draw a snake eye ash, which, yeah, guys, I, I mean, I, I would have also have had some follow up with the um, simple spoils into the DR star. So that would have worked. But I, I would have gotten a Snacker Ash anyway. But obviously, yeah, throwing a Snacker Ash hard is, is quite nice. And then he just realizes this is this is game over. I think the next one is a quite interesting one, or the one after that, where I show you how you can use the barricade blocker to get into your turbulence place. Um, and don't you worry, there will be a full rescue as guard coming. Um, <laughs> and couldn't find the time until now. I will do it on Sunday probably. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that, guys. So next game, we have a yeah, Sosu hand, I would say. So I'm deciding to use the Diabellstar, getting rid of the Jet Synchron, because my thought process is if my Diabellstar get then impermed or something, I still have normal summon Snake Eye Oak. This is already in the grave, so I can resummon that with uh, the Snake Eye Oak, and I can keep my cross out and the contain. Could make an argument for just dropping the contain here, but these are basically two normal summons, and I can only normal summon one. Uh, so this is my backup normal summon if I can't get to my um, to my hydrant into airlifter play. Um, 
And then, yeah, let's see how this works out. So I'm going Diabelstar, this to the grave. This I can also get back from the grave via a hand card, so that's quite nice. Then I set this, um, then I activate this, and I'm getting Ashed here, which I have the cross out for, fortunately. Otherwise, I would still have place. I could go Snake Eye Oak. We could go Hita and then climb up into the Princess because there's an Ash in the graveyard now. So it would have still worked, but I definitely want to get this through to get to my Rescue Ace stuff here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm Original Simple Spoils, Rescue Hydrant, Activate to grab my Turbulence, or my Airlifter, sorry. Then Airlifter Normal Summon, and at this point I'm grabbing the Alert because I figure that I can set the Emergency and then activate the Emergency afterwards. Also, the Alert can just now, because the Hydrant is on the field, search me the Turbulence, so this works as well. So I use the uh, less, the, like the, the worst trap of them all, I use, or the worst uh, Rescue Ace card of them all, I use it now to get to basically the same point as I would have gotten with with the uh, emergency. Uh, the emergency would also have forced me to attribute one of my rescue as monsters, meaning I would have one less body on the field. So that's why I'm going for the alert. And here I'm going for Hita because there is an Ash here. Ah, this is not this is not the replay with the barricade blocker. So here I'm going for and a quick little thing here, right? You could have also gone for a sprite elf here at this point, yeah. And sprite elf, I have talked about this in the quick um, profile yesterday. Uh, sprite elf obviously protects these and these uh, platforms here from being targeted. So I could have gone for a more safer play, uh, protecting my turbulence. But I figured that. I had activated so many effects that you would definitely want to imperm, like a Diabell Star, then the Hydrant, might want to imperm this one or effect Vela this, and I never saw any like red flashing from him here, so I, I figured, okay, there is no effect Vela, no imperm, but this would have been the safer play. This is the play that gets me into the Promethean Princess afterwards, so I decided to do this. Obviously, it would have also worked with the Turbulence, um, but I decided for this play, maybe a bit more unsafe, we are setting this this and then this and then i realized that unfortunately i have um, like i put away my hydrant so i can't activate any of these now um obviously i have everything in the hand that's quite nice and i can still go promethean princess and then revive the hydrant um but this is what i realize now so i go revive the hydrant and then i can now activate uh, any of these here so i go emergency to get my preventer uh, I take the Preventer and then I send away the Preventer. If Preventer goes to the grave, then you can resummon something from the grave, which is my Airlifter. My idea was that I can rescue my own Preventer from the grave once again if I need it. Though, thinking about this now, what I should have done here and I didn't is make... Um, I should have done this, but he's not in my extra deck, actually. But um, if I would have had the Sunlight Wolf, I could have gone into Sunlight Wolf with these two here and then get the Preventer back to the hand that way. But I decided to do this, get a body on the field. I uh, wasn't really thinking about why I would need an extra body, so we are ending up on this board here, and you can see that this, it wasn't really optimal. What I should have done here, that was this wasn't optimal. I wasn't thinking about the complete line here, which, if you just play, then you just play. I should have sent away the turbulence that would have kept me with the preventer on the field, and then I would not need to use the rescue to rescue my own preventer, because rescue, when Hydrant is on the field, can also use the opponent's graveyard, which is very important, a very strong interruption. It's basically like, no, not basically like like a call, but it's a bit much, but it's very strong. So we're going over, and once again, we are getting small worlded with dinos here. This is a pretty uneventful one, but I just wanted to show you how I played here and what my thought process were. Then he goes imperm. For some reason on this one, I'm like, why do you do this? Because this negates anything anyway. He uh, drops this, and then I decide to get this out of the graveyard. So I'm not the biggest dino expert. I don't know, but this basically says I can't interrupt him in any way anymore with monsters he controls, which is just, and this card is so insane. And then you can also banish any number of dinosaur monsters from your graveyard, including this special summon one dinosaur monster from your deck with a level equal to blah, blah, blah. So for, because of the second effect, obviously uh, putting pulling this out of the graveyard, um, he still gets his um, anything, uh, everything, my activated effects are negated effect, but I want uh, to remove this thing so he can't activate the second banish effect and get to his boss monster. This was my idea. So I was like, okay, this, this might work because he only has two hand cards, has a normal summon left but i figured that if he has a normal summon level four then he can just um can just go into his boss monster right so i i was like okay let's remove the miscellaneosaurus and this seemed to be enough so he just scooped and the last replay is the replay where i use the barricade blocker uh, which as i already said i don't think i have made like totally optimal plays in all of these replays here there were definitely some mistakes by the way quick little thing if you want to improve then go ahead and watch your own replays uh, especially if you think that you could have done something better that is very very helpful 
as a good practice here. So this is our hand. We are going first once again. So really lucky here, obviously. Um, this is, uh, I go for bonfire into just getting this snake ash because I figure I can still get to the hydrant uh, via the normal line here. So I go poplar and yeah, you know the drill. I can fast forward a bit. Then we go for the Linko Rebo just to get the poplar for free into the spell trap so we can send it away for free. So it costs nothing. Go into a hydrant. I activate the hydrant. Everything goes through and then I get the turbulence. And here I realize that and the problem that I am facing currently is I have one rescue ace on the field, but I need two in the grave to be able to summon the turbulence. So I am forced now to use my barricade blocker, which is exactly why this is in here. Because if this card is linked summoned, you can discard one card during the end phase of this turn, add one continuous or field spell from your grave to your hand. The second effect can come up if you lose your rescue ace field spell and want to grab it back. This can be very nice actually, but we are using this just to um, discard a card. So I'm going with these two into the barricade blocker, then barricade blocker discards the hydrant, and now I can go for the turbulence here. And once again, I could have also just gone here at this moment into a sprite elf, protecting me from being impermed here. I'm not quite sure if I'm doing this. I don't think so. He goes nip here. Okay, then I can't. Then it wouldn't make wouldn't have make a difference. But the cool thing is that we can still play here. So he goes nip, gives me a token, and now my thrust is live. And I can also activate the spell or the trap that I'm getting because there's a monster on the field. So I'm thinking about this and I'm like, okay, one for one works because I have a snake I oak. So I go one for one, unfortunately getting rid of my ash. That's not optimal, but oak revive the, I think in this case, hydrant from the banish I, so i figure that getting this from the banish would make a lot of sense because after that if i link it uh, if i use this on the field as material it will go to the graveyard which is where i want that not in the not in the banish because i don't have access to my preventer so having this in the banish is nonsensical having this in the grave means i can revive this so i sent these away for the flam birch dragon obviously and then i link them away i think for the ip mascarina which um i uh, yeah firstly i set this in the spell trap because there's nothing else that i really can set in the spell trap and I will not have this on my end board because with the Promethean Princess I will need to revive the turbulence to activate turbulence's effect right so I'm setting this in the spell trap so that he cannot overrun one of my uh, monsters on my end board next turn so I make an IP Mascarina that I have to get away obviously I can resummon now um, quick little thing here I would always resummon the Poplar because if something happens here and you can't continue then if the Poplar stays on the field and your opponent gets his turn and destroys this Poplar then you can activate Poplar's effect once again to set something in the spell trap which any other of the snake eyes for example they if they get destroyed by your opponent on his next turn they don't do anything right so always always use at least one poplar with this revive so we're going for the princess now obviously which is nice it's pretty easy to get to the turbulence once it's in the grave because of the princess so we are going the turbulence resummon here obviously now i can activate the turbulence and we are in a very good um, situation i can still use the emergency here not quite sure if i'm doing it i think i do and make a preventer of this uh, okay, make an emblem whale, and then I think I call it a day with the set here. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. Use the alert to grab the preventer. That's what I did. Obviously, then I can go preventer banish um, this, and then yeah, get the preventer to the field. What I could have done here is uh, no, there were no more useful targets here. No, this this makes sense. So I have the book, and I have everything else here. We have the rescuers interruption emergency. He gives me the uh, Jizu Kiro, which is all right because I I still have emergency, which can. Uh, oh no, in this deck there is not another preventer in here. Okay, so forget what I'm saying. I can't get another preventer, but normally you would be able to. He goes um, Dogmatic Karna, Dear Servant, grabs uh, this one here. I'm deciding. He draws a card now. Um, he now goes for the Maximus, which he can special summon, uh, which I don't want him to get stuff from the extra deck to the graveyard, so I'm deciding to use my Promethean Princess now here. And just a quick little thing he will give up now, but one thing to note here that... At this point, I can't unfortunately re revive my IP Mascarina because I would have normally been able to do this with the Amphibious destroying itself or destroying by, being destroyed by the Promethean, but I'm firelocked, right? So uh, what you could in theory do if you wanted to, you could in theory um, destroy... Oh, you can't destroy your own monsters, right? Then forget what I'm saying. Then forget what I'm saying. You Obviously, what I maybe should have done before this uh, quick little thing is activate the rescue to rescue my IP Mascarina. I, I should definitely 
definitely have done this. So rescue, rescue the IP Mascarina. And so I should have chained the rescue to the Promethean Princess activation because the IP Mascarina here on the field would have meant I could go into a um, four material Apollosa, which obviously is extremely powerful. And I would still have all these negates, right? So this would have been game, but it was still game. So that was quite nice. Yeah, they, these are the four, uh, the, the four win streak that I had with the deck. And uh, as I already said, if you want to um, see the whole deck list and check out the video from yesterday, it's on the top right corner. Thanks for being here. If you like my content, please consider subscribing, hitting the thumbs up and the notification bell, and we will see each other in the next one.